43, Miss Abreu here. I wanted to go through a regression problem here with you. So here we're gonna take a look at climate change data. Um, it's a topic kind of near and dear to probably most of our hearts, but definitely mine. Um, so we were gonna look at temperature anomalies and anomaly, well, anomalies and temperatures. Um, they refer to this comparison at any given place, and there's plenty of places that we're pulling around the world, um, but for any given place in time with the equivalent average temperature for that place in time, based on data for a particular time span. So NASA decided to take the this, this baseline temperature rating. It took it from the years 1951 to 1980. So it set that as the average temperature at all of these places all over the world. And we're just gonna look at one, um, one poll and we're gonna look at the average temperature anomaly. So if you look at this number here um, for 1960, it just says 1960, we were below the average that occurred between 1951 and 1980, all right? And then we have 1970, we were a little bit above that average in that year. So the period 51 to 80 was chosen just because we had this, this three decade span to talk about our average temperature, uh, our average temperature, like a, again, globally. And so that's why we, we, we picked that. Most of the adults today grew up somewhere in that time span. For you guys, not so much, but for us, a little so much. Um, so in a temperature anomaly of 0.5 degrees Celsius for a location would mean that the temperature there was 0.5 degrees higher than average for that location over this 30 year span. So like I said, in 1960, at this particular location, we were under, over, 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 right? And you've heard about climate change happening. So here's some data to back it up. So it says find a linear model for the data when we are T years after 1960 and round to two decimal places. So I actually put my data in my list already. You can pause the video and go ahead and do that. But once you're through here, it's our standard stat calc eight. We're gonna try linear regression first. Oops, not L2. I mean, not two, but I need L2. And then I'm gonna drop this into Y1. And I'm looking at a pretty strong R, right? There's my y-intercept, there's my slope. Let me go ahead and turn my stat plot on and let's see what this would actually look like. So I can see there is a linear relationship, right? Temperature anomaly is increasing over time and it does look linear. That's why I'm gonna go ahead and at least for right now, start that linear model. So I'm gonna flip over to my iPad and I'm gonna write up that linear model, keeping in mind, oops, let me run this one more time that these are gonna be my numbers. So I'm gonna take the first three lines from that calculator output, and I'm gonna write it up in a midterm level answer. All right, so I will be right back. I'll see you in a bit, bye. Okay, so we've gotten our information from our calculator and I wrote the first three lines down, but let's go ahead and actually make it midterm level quality. So I'm gonna go ahead and instead of writing a general A and B, I'm gonna write negative 0.05 plus 0.01x. I'm gonna to remember to put the hat over it. And then I also need to remember to put in the actual context of my variable. And there were my two numerical variables, right? We had years, and really specifically, we had years after 1960, right? And we had temperature anomaly. So I'm gonna say, hey, I can predict, oops, there we go, temperature anomaly with the equation of negative 0.05 plus 0.01 times, and this would be years after 1960. And if you want to just write years instead, right, let's say I, I can just erase this part, that's fine. Ooh, let me write the S if you want to write years, but just keep in mind that it's got to be years after 1960 when we go to manipulate it. So the next part of the question says, use your linear model, right? So we're going to use this model we found in part A to estimate the temperature anomaly in 2030. So we're going to predict into the future. And then we'll say, hey, is this an example of interpolation or extrapolation? And we've been asked to round to one decimal. So I'm gonna use my linear model. Let me rewrite it here. So we have temperature anomaly equals negative 0.05 plus 0.01 times years. All right, but remember, I said this is really technically years after, oops, 1960. We've got to remember that it was years after 1960. So what I mean by that, is I don't wanna plug in 2030 right here. That would give me a, a, a number that I, I really didn't want because that would be 2,030 years after 1960. So really we've got 2020 and we've got 2030 that we need to extend to. And if you remember, it says years after 1960, so this was year zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 
60, and then finally 70. That's the number I want to plug in. And if you wanted a formula to figure that out, what you would do is you would always, if you want to figure out your X value or your T value technically, you would do your current year minus your base year of 1960. And if we do 2030 minus 1960, sure enough, we do get 70. So what I want to start to plug in as we go through here is that I would have negative 0.05 plus 0 0.01 times 70, and then I would go calculate that number on my calculator, all right, and whatever I get out of there, and I, I don't know yet, I'll go, I'll go plug it in in just a moment, I'm gonna get that many degrees Celsius, right? So once I get that number, ooh, where's my pen? Oh, it's on an eraser, there we go. So I know my units are gonna be degrees Celsius, all right? Because I'm doing 2030, because I'm predicting outside my initial data range, I know this is gonna be extrapolation, so now I'm gonna kick back over to my calculator so I can see what's going on there. So I will join you in just a moment. All right, see you in a bit. Bye. Let's try this out. So I plug this into my calculator and it looks like we have our temperature anomaly is about 0.65 degrees Celsius. Now I also, if I wanted to, if I hit zoom nine, I could calculate it here. Now, the thing is, if I go to do second trace and I push option one and I type in 70, I'm gonna get an error. And that's because my initial data, right, my initial window was just from negative 5 to 55. And that all comes from the fact that my, my time frames went from 0 to 50, right? Zero years after 1960 to 50 years after 1960. And I'm trying to predict at 70. So I just need to extend this window. I'll extend it just for fun. I'll go to 100. I'll make it have a tick mark every 10 units instead of every 1 unit. But if you ever adjust your window, don't hit zoom nine again. If you do, it'll go right back to 55. I'm gonna hit graph. And now let's see what the calculator would give me if I do it this way. If I plug in 70 years, right, you can see it's 0.957, right? And that actually is quite different from 0.65. So you can see that as we round, right, we rounded this information to two decimals and we're gonna round this to one decimal, right, I'm actually gonna ultimately have 0.7 degrees Celsius. You can see there's a big discrepancy. So the sooner you round in a problem, the less precise your answer. But that's okay, I just wanted you to see the, the two ways to do it. So I would accept here either an answer of 0.7 because that would be rounded to one decimal. Or if you did it this way, and again, you plugged in 70, you could actually give me an answer of one, one degree Celsius, because if you round up 95, that would round to one degree Celsius. So either of those answers are acceptable. All right, so I'll write that up in just a little bit, but now it says, hey, is the linear model a good fit? So we always have three factors that we have to check. And the first one was, hey, was the scatter plot linear? And the scatter plot was linear. Ooh, I can't spell on the fly. <laughs> and I'll put a happy face here. All right, the next thing we would need to check was, was R close to one or negative one. And if you remember, let me head back here a couple of times. Let me get back to linear regression. Our R value was strong, right? So here, let me adjust this. So our R value was what negative, or positive, excuse me, 0.962, right? That's a, oops, not 9.962. That's a strong R value. That's looking good, so I'll put another happy face. And then the most important piece of information is the residual plot. So let me go here. And now that I've run regression and I have something in my L1, excuse me, my Y1, you gotta have that thing in Y1, I can make a residual plot. If instead of doing L1 to L2, I do L1 against the resids, which is second stat. And in, again, in most calculators, I think it's option seven. You can see this online one I have. Is, is different. So let's go find resids. Oops, there it was. It was in option eight. Okay, great. So we've got that. Let me hit zoom nine and let's see what this looks like. And I have that line going through because that's my linear model going through. If I want to turn that off, I could hover over the equal sign and just turn it off for right now. You can see it's no longer active. So there's my residual plot. My residual plot doesn't have a pattern. So let's go ahead and write that. Residual plot shows no pattern. Oops. Right, which is a, oops, and I can't spell, which is a good thing. So ultimately, the answer to this question is yes, the linear model is a good fit. Okay, the scatter plot was linear, R was strong, and the residual plot showed no pattern. All right, so let me go ahead and just clean this up a bit. 
and I'll make this look a little bit nicer. This is probably the R you're used to looking at. All right, so that's what I would have here. All right, so because I checked all three things, we are good to go there. All right, and then the next thing is at, oh, excuse me, we're good to go and the answer would be yes to the question. Yes, the linear model is a good fit. The next thing says, hey, can you go ahead and interpret the slope? So the slope here was 0.01, right? So if I'm writing this out, right, so we have here the slope. Um, so I'll put, give me a moment, let me get this in text. So this would be slope was equal to 0 0.01, right? And if I want to think about that as a unit ratio, I could even start to think of it as a fraction, and we could put 0 0.01 in ratio to 1, right? And then we can start to think about the units that would go here. So if I then think about the units, and we'll see if I can get this code to work, um, we would have degrees Celsius in ratio to years. Let me see if I can get that to work. No, no something's a little bit off. Uh, I think I can do it. Did I do it? Uh, la, 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 la. Got the frac there. Oh, this is what's missing. I need that to go here. Got it. Okay. This is what I was trying to do. Got to give me a moment to try and code a bit. So we have a ratio of Celsius degrees to years. So if I start to interpret this, I will say for every one year increase in years since 1960, the predicted average increase in temperature anomaly is 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. Right. That's what we're looking at. So for every year that passes, right, then we have about 0 .01, uh, a 0 0.01 increase in the degree Celsius, right? So the temperature anomalies are increasing by about 0 0.01 degrees per year. And that might not sound like a lot, but it is a lot over time. It's going to be very, very problematic. So just to recap, right, we had our data, plugged it into our lists, got a linear model, right? Use that linear model to extrapolate to see what was going to happen in 2030, excuse me, 2030, okay? And then we have a little typo here. Let me just switch that. We don't need two equal signs. Then we said, hey, it was the linear model a good fit. Again, there's three factors. Scatter plot was linear. R was strong. No pattern in the residual plot. Great. Interpret the slope. We have a template for that. Right, so we have for every one unit increase in X, the predicted average increase and decrease in Y is blank units. So I filled that in for our problem. Now, I didn't ask this, but I could have said, hey, interpret R. You could have said there was a strong positive linear relationship between years and temperature anomalies. Right? I could have had you increase, I'm sorry, interpret the Y intercept. We could have said in 1960, the predicted temperature anomaly is negative 0.05 degrees Celsius. I could have asked you to interpret R squared. And let me go get that number for a moment. I could have said about 92% of the variation in temperature anomaly can be explained by the year. Right? So we've got all of those sentences that we can talk about, right, in terms of our interpretations, our four interpretations. You can predict. You can make a residual plot, you can calculate residuals and make a residual plot, and then you can tell me if the linear model is a good fit. And I just mentioned the residuals. If you needed to go get the residuals, if you remember, if you go into L3 and define it to be your resids, right? when I hit enter, it's going to auto-populate, so you can see all of my residuals there. Actual y values minus predicted y values. All right? Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.